see, we've all got what I call a laugh track. There's gene deep certainty that things will be different, that you'll move to another city, that meet the people that will be the friends for the rest of your lives, that you'll fall in love and be fulfilled, F fucking fulfillment and closure. Whatever the fuck those two fucking empty jars to hold this shit storm. Nothing's ever fulfilled until the very end. And closure. No, no. Nothing is ever over. The ontological fallacy of expecting a light at the end of the tunnel, well, that's why the preacher sells, same as the shrink. See, the preacher, he encourages your capacity for illusion. And he tells you it's a fucking virtue. Always a buck to be had doing that. And it's such a desperate sense of entitlement, isn't it? Surely, this is all for me. Me. Me, me, me. Uh, I'm so fucking important. I'm so fucking important, right? Fuck you. People, I have seen the finale of thousands of lives, man. Young, old, each one so sure of their realness. They know that their sensory experience constituted a unique individual. Purpose, meaning, so certain that they were more than a biological puppet. The truth will out and everybody sees once the strings are cut off. These still bodies so certain that they were more than the sum of their urges. Only useless spinning, tired minds, collision, desire, ignorance. This, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean when I'm talking about time and death and futility. Now there are broader ideas at work Mainly, what is owed between us as a society for our mutual illusions. Now, 14 straight hours staring at DBs. These are the things you think of. You ever done that? You look in their eyes, even in the picture. Doesn't matter if they're dead or alive, you can still read them. You know what you see? They welcomed it, not at first, but right there in the last instant, it's an unmistakable relief. See, cause they were afraid and now they saw for the very first time how easy it was to let go. And they saw in that last nanosecond, they saw what they were. That you, yourself, this whole big drama, it was never anything but a jerry-rig of presumption and dumb will. And you could just let go. Finding out that you didn't have to hold on so tight. To realize that all your life, all your love, all your hate, all your memory, all your pain, it was all the same thing. It was all the same dream. A dream that you had inside a locked room. That dream about being a person. And like a lot of dreams, there's a monster at the end of it. You'll do this again. Time is a flat circle. What's that, Nietzsche? Shut the fuck up. Why should I live in history, huh? 
Fuck, I don't want to know anything anymore. This is a world where nothing is solved. Someone once told me time is a flat circle. That everything we've ever done or will do, we're going to do over and over and over again. And that little girl and that little boy, they're going to be in that room again and again. And again, forever. You ever hear of something called membrane theory detectives? It's like in this universe, we process time linearly, forward, but outside of our space time, from what would be a fourth dimensional perspective, time wouldn't exist. And from that vantage, could we attain it? We'd see. Our space-time would look flattened, like a single sculpture. Matter in a superposition, every place it ever occupied. Our sentience just cycling through our lives like carts on a track. See? Everything outside our dimension, that's eternity. Eternity looking down on us. Now to us, it's a sphere. But to them, it's a circle. In eternity where there is no time, nothing can grow, nothing can become, nothing changes. So death created time to grow the things that it would kill. And you are reborn, but into the same life that you've always been born into. And how many times have we had this conversation, detectives? Who knows? I mean, you can't remember your lives. You can't change your lives. And that is a terrible and secret fate of all life. You're trapped. In a nightmare you keep waking into. I shouldn't even fucking be here, Marty. I believe no shit is the proper response to that observation. Nah, I don't mean like that. I, it's something else. So talk to me, Rust. There was a moment, uh, you know, when I was under in the darkness. Something, whatever I'd been reduced to, you know, not even conscious. Just a sense of vague awareness in the dark. I could feel my definitions fading. And beneath that darkness, there's another kind. It was deeper, warm, like a substance. I could feel, man. And I knew, I knew my daughter waited for me there. So clear. I could feel her. I could feel a piece of my pop, too. It was like I was a part of everything I'd ever loved. And we were all the three of us fading down, and all I had to do was let go. And I did. I said, darkness, yeah. Then I disappeared. But I could still feel her love there, even more than before. Nothing, nothing but that love. And I woke up.